It's easy to think the biggest cause of bloating is going to be just a complete gut dysbiosis, right? Like my bacteria in my gut is just out of whack. Nah, the bigger cause of bloating when it comes down to just intestinal bloating and just gastrointestinal distress is usually a lack of hydrochloric acid. It's kind of funny because we don't think of that as being an issue. And just adding acid into the equation doesn't really solve the problem. You see, when we're slowing down how we break down food, we're slowing down how quickly it absorbs. And when it hangs out in the gut for a longer period of time, that's when you can start running into issues, right? That's when you can potentially run into what's called a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because you have things that are ultimately left undigested that allow bacteria to ferment and cross feed on, which isn't always a bad thing. Having a you know, good plethora of bacteria in your gut is not a bad thing, but when it's in the wrong place, like your small intestine, that's called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and that triggers some bloating there. But outside of the SIBO in and of itself, in a more chronic situation, we look at just gastrointestinal distress. Like you get up in the morning, you have a nice flat stomach, you feel like everything's hunky-dory and great, and then as the day goes on, you, you feel like you got fat. Like what happened? Like what, did it, what happened today? It's amazing what that can do to your mood too. Just how you look and how you feel. And the interesting thing with bloating compared to actual fat accumulation is bloating puts pressure on the nerves. So when you have bloating occurring in the abdomen, it's putting pressure on these nerves and that is literally uncomfortable, but it's also constantly reminding you that the bloating is there. Okay, if you have subcutaneous fat tissue that's developed, you're not really having that press on nerves, okay? So you could be, for lack of a better way of saying it, blissfully unaware that you have body fat on your abdomen, whereas when you're bloated, you're walking around feeling uncomfortable, constantly having this like cerebral reminder that you're bloated and your stomach is distended. So let's talk about how to fix it because one of the biggest issues is a mineral deficiency, believe it or not. Okay, zinc plays a huge role in hydrochloric acid. When we are deficient in zinc, it is easy to become deficient in hydrochloric, I shouldn't say deficient, but have lesser amounts of hydrochloric acid. This is very, very, very important. Now, B vitamins play a huge role too, but B vitamins, it's difficult because B vitamins will come and go within our diet and they will come and go within our system because they are so water soluble, they excrete very fast. So if I were to consume a B vitamin like supplement, Within a couple hours, my urine would be bright yellow and that's gone, right? So it's very difficult to talk about a B deficiency. You should just be consistently getting B vitamins in through your diet. But zinc is one of those that is a little bit easier to manipulate because those levels aren't gonna fluctuate quite as much. So a zinc supplement or consuming things like shellfish or consuming things like good nuts that have a high amount of zinc can play a big role. Because think about it like this. Once you become deficient in zinc, and hydrochloric acid, or we'll just refer to it as HCL. If HCL is lower, lower concentration, then that means when you do eat foods that have zinc, it's harder to digest. So you get bloated, but you're also not able to extract the nutrients, extract the zinc, extract the vitamins out of that food, which therefore triggers this vicious circle, right? So then you're stuck in this situation where you have low zinc levels, low hydrochloric acid. So you're absorbing less zinc, so lower hydrochloric acid, absorbing less zinc. So you need to have a pattern interrupt with that. So getting some zinc in is unbelievably imperative, not to mention for a lot of other things too. Now, I wanna come back and talk about H. pylori in just a second because I feel like that's a very important one to talk about. But one of the things that we don't always think about is stress and how it plays a tremendous role in our digestion, okay? If you have an acute stressor, like something quick, a quick shock to the system where you're stressed out, it might affect your digestion a little bit. But if you're chronically stressed, it really can play a big role. What happens is when you kick into that sympathetic nervous system, when you're stressed out, all the blood flow, all the energy is going to your brain and to your limbs. Okay, fight or flight response. It is a natural response to slow down digestion. And again, this will happen in a short-term acute setting if you got startled by a lion, but if you're consistently stressed out, you're consistently reducing that digestive ability, which explains why you get so bloated so easily. And this is something that can carry on for a while because once you slow down that process, it takes a while to build it up. So yes, the zinc piece, but getting a grip on the stress might be the biggest thing in just that's out there if you ask me in terms of digestion. One of the things I've been drinking lately that I think is really cool is this Organifi gold chocolate. I've always been a fan of uh, having chocolate at night. 
I think this stuff helps. I really do think this stuff plays a role with considering what it has in it. It's really cool. Okay, so Organifi Chocolate Gold is a chocolate drink that only has a couple grams of carbs. It doesn't, it's not like one of these crazy, like super sugary chocolate beverages. Okay, but you can drink it at night. Helps promote kind of a calm, relaxed feeling in and of itself, just because cocoa can do that. But it also has reishi mushroom in it, which is a adaptogenic mushroom. So reishi mushroom is associated mainly with kind of balance and being able to feel that potential calm. So I'm a big fan of adaptogens, a big fan of reishi in that case. Not to mention it has turkey tail, which I've been a big fan of when it comes down to immune support. That's personally, that's like my own anecdotal experience. But in this particular case, I love that it has turmeric in it. That's where the name gold comes into play. So turmeric and ginger. Okay, ginger is fun, something that I find really supports digestion. Okay, so I'm looking at like the bigger, more holistic piece here, if you ask me. Okay, we have the stress response, which we can potentially mitigate a little bit with the reishi, but then when we look at the effects of ginger and how it's been documented to potentially have some effects in supporting digestion, then that works really well too from a bloating side of things. Perhaps that's something that could help us out there. Again, you know, not saying it's a magic box or a magic powder or anything like that, but it's full of 100% USDA organic ingredients that might be pretty beneficial for that. So turmeric is something that's been documented to help with the occasional aches and pains, like maybe from exercise. So anything that kind of helps you get that rest and recovery that you need. So I went ahead and I put a link down below that'll save you 20% off of your Organifi order. So you can use the Organifi Gold Chocolate or you can use the Organifi Gold if you don't want the chocolate one. The Organifi Gold still has the turmeric, still has the ginger, still has the adaptogenic mushrooms, which again, Again, I think people need to really learn a lot more about. I think the adaptogenic mushrooms are huge. Anyway, so that link down below will save you a few bucks. Definitely recommend you try it out if you're someone that's trying to get a grip on bloating. I think just kind of getting to the root cause or the root issues might be a better solution than trying to have little quick fixes with enzymes and things like that here and there. So give them a shot, use that link down below in the description. So now let's talk about H. pylori for a second. H. pylori is a specific strain of bacteria that we're starting to see people talk about a lot more, right? We're seeing, uh, I know people that go and get mu gut microbiome tests and they say, oh my gosh, my H. pylori levels are 500, 600, really high. Well, it's a simple explanation. I mean, that is just an overage of a bacteria that produces gas that can trigger bloating. But one of the things that we don't always look at with H. pylori is how it affects hydrochloric acid. Okay, so H. pylori can increase this enzyme called urease. And what urease does is it does not decrease your hydrochloric acid. What urease does is it neutralizes your hydrochloric acid and makes it less potent. So even if your body is doing everything that it can to produce the right amount of hydrochloric acid, you're running into the situation where it's more neutralized. In that particular case, one of the most common things that people have been doing that seem to be working, at least on social media and kind of anecdotal situations, is reducing starches, reducing uh, carbohydrate consumption, going relatively low FODMAP. Okay, the carbohydrates aren't a bad thing, but what happens is when you have this overgrowth of specific strains of bacteria, Carbohydrates generally act as a pretty heavy fuel for things like that. Quicker digesting carbohydrates. So going lower, slower glycemic, lower glycemic, slower digesting rather, that could help you out a little bit with that. But also remember that in terms of water retention, in terms of bloating that occurs there too, insulin plays a role too. So if your carbohydrate levels are consistently high and your insulin levels are high, the kidneys are going to retain more water naturally. It's sort of this um, response that they have. When insulin levels are low, they expel more water. Okay, so we really pay attention to that whole link there. Another thing you really want to be paying attention to is an adequate level of hydration. We don't always consider it, but hydration plays a role in the ability of the gut to actually move things, gut motility in the first place. So if you're adequately hydrated, even if your gut bacteria is a little bit off, at least things are still moving a little bit more seamlessly. You just don't want to drink a bunch of water with a meal because that can trigger bloating as well. With bloating and kind of this whole link with hydrochloric acid and everything like that, it's still important to mention the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth piece, which I've talked about in other videos. But I think one of the most common things that we are seeing is that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth seems to make it really difficult when people consume carbs. Now it may be sounding like, okay, this video, Thomas is just talking about a way to reduce carbohydrates. Look at, I don't care if you consume carbohydrates, I just look at the research. And when we see SIBO, we see that carbohydrate absorption decreases. Okay, it has to do with the fact that there are less enzymes available 
because it's altering that biome there to a point where you're not breaking down the carbohydrates, basically reducing some of the amylase and reducing some of the enzymes available to break down carbohydrates, which means from a blood sugar perspective, those carbohydrates aren't spiking your blood sugar, which is great, but you are getting more bloated. That's why people with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, if they eat things like bread or if they eat things even like a potato, a lot of times they'll like really, really bloated out of, as a result of that. So they usually recommend with SIBO that they go lower FODMAP, right? So we want fermentable oligosaccharides and everything like that where we're trying to reduce that going on a low FODMAP diet. But I do think that simply reducing the starches can play a tremendous role. But overall, it's more of a lifestyle piece, right? The bloating comes much more of a result of mineral deficiencies from not getting an adequate diet in and not getting the adequate nutrition in that way, but also just the overall stress response that we're dealing with on a daily basis, okay? So if we get a grip on those kinds of things, you can usually get a grip on your bloating. So start looking at yourself in the morning, look at yourself in the evening. If you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you find that you're more bloated in the evening, yeah, probably time to do something and make a change, at least with your lifestyle. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.